Good Tuesday morning, everybody. It is November the 10th, and welcome to day two of the first ever Kids Brain Health Virtual Conference. I'm uh, Dr. Brian Goldman, and I am thrilled to be your host and guide for uh, today and the rest of this week. I also host the CBC radio program, White Coat Black Art, and the CBC podcast, The Dose. And I also happen to be the parent of a teenage son with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. And I'm so pleased to be spending the next few days here with you as our 2020 conference focuses on new and emerging ways of connection. So many important topics to cover, especially in this strange new reality where we continue our important work and battle, the pandemic, COVID-19, at the same time. We're in this together. Yesterday, we kicked things off exploring the theme, ac accessing services in a COVID-19 world. And I hope, I trust, I expect that the first day was as stimulating for you as it was for me. You know, key highlights, of course, I thought there were too many highlight things to mention, but the key one for me, uh, and I think for many of you, was that moving and insightful speech from Fraser Mustard Lecture Awardee, Dr. Cindy Blackstock. Her talk focused on how systemic state-based discrimination undermines the success of First Nations children. Uh, her discussion, underpinned the theme of systemic inequities rooted in the socioeconomic determinants of health, you know, like lack of clean water, lack of internet access, uh, lack of proper housing, poverty, and how that challenges accessing services for Canada's First Nations, Métis and Inuit children. If you missed Cindy's talk or any of our sessions yesterday, you will be able to view all of our videos post-conference on our new YouTube channel. Before we jump ahead, as always, a big shout out to our sponsors, and they are uh, Simon Fraser University, Claret, the Azrieli Foundation, Queen's University, Can FASD, uh, Holland Blue Review Kids Rehabilitation Hospital, uh, the Ontario Centre for Excellence for Child and Youth Mental Health, CYMH, Gather, Family Support Institute of BC, and the Michael Smith Foundation for Health Research. Uh, on day two's lineup, we're exploring a different theme, but related, emerging ways of delivering treatments. COVID-19 continues to hinder how we deliver treatments, and for families, uh, they're struggling to receive the treatments uh, that they so desperately require. Now, we examine how that's changing. In a few moments, at 11.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, that is 8.15 Pacific Time, we have our first session, Advancing Navigation Lessons from the KBHN Integrated Navigation Support Project. This panel presents a framework for addressing and advancing navigation in British Columbia, Alberta, and the Yukon. Please feel free to ask questions throughout our sessions using the Q&A at the end of each session or connect with other conference delegates in our chat. Either way, we'd love to be able to hear from you. Uh, following the advancing navigation session, we'll move on to the exhibition and networking session at 1 p.m. Eastern time, that's 10 a.m. Pacific time. Yesterday was the first time that conference delegates were able to access the free virtual networking environment Gather Town. And it was such a treat connecting with other conference delegates and watching everyone navigate the virtual platform together. There is still time for you to create your avatar if you haven't, so that you can connect with conference sponsors and exhibitors. I've tried it, it's a lot of fun. The link is uh, to your right, which is in that direction. While you're there, don't forget to pop into the Ask an Expert panel occurring at the same time on Gather Town. <clears throat> The Ask an Expert panel is where trainees and community members come together for an opportunity to virtually interact with experienced members of their profession and discussion uh, and discuss important topics of interest. Uh, expert uh, hosts, experts will host virtual tables to guide the discussion and share personal insight into neurodevelopmental research, community engagement, and career development. I will be there on Thursday, and I'll give you some details about that a little later this week. Some of today's experts, though, include Dr. Melanie Barwick. Uh, she is a senior scientist at Sick Kids, uh, and she'll be discussing implementing practice change and KBHN's very own chief scientific officer, that's Dr. James Reynolds, who opens up about jump starting your career. After that, we'll take a break and we'll return at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, that is noon Pacific Time, for Luke's Legacy Lecture. Luke's Legacy Lecture is a memorial tribute to the life of Luke Martins, 
who died in August, just shy of his 14th birthday. Luke was the son of Rachel and Nick Martins, and he was a boy who inspired authenticity and excellence in family engagement in, in research. His tenacity and love of life remind us why we seek answers to childhood disability challenges in science together. In a panel presentation, family graduates from KBHN, Canchild, and McMaster University Family Engagement in Research course share their experiences on the impact these services have had on their involvement as family research partners across the country. Uh, the, the research these days, this is, this is an important new concept that, that uh, you know, the concept of nothing about us without us, the idea that families play a critical role in the development of research goals and implementing uh, research and knowledge translation. So you don't wanna miss that session. Following that, you also won't wanna miss our second round of trainee lightning talks at 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time today, that's 1 p.m. Pacific time. We had our first session yesterday. These short three minute lightning presentations were selected from trainee and community member abstracts. Each presentation seeks to illuminate the breadth and exciting work of teams across our research and support communities. I was really quite amazed at the, at the depth and breadth of research that we saw from Young Minds yesterday, and I can't wait to see what we're gonna have today. And then at the end of the day, I'll be back with you once again at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Sorry, that is 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. That's 4.30 p.m. Eastern time for an end of day reflection uh, in which I'll give you some of the highlights of the day in case you missed some of them. And that will be followed by another round of our virtual poster sessions on the free GatherTown platform at 4.45 p.m. Eastern time. That's 1.45 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, for now though, I'd like to welcome the Honorable Senator Rosemary Moody to the KBHN conference. Ms. Moody is an independent senator who is passionate about medicine, health inequalities, and working with people her work revolves around improving the quality of health care delivery across Canada, which makes her the perfect person to give today's welcome. Senator Moody, over to you. Thank you, Fran, and hello, everyone. As you've heard, my name is Rosemary Moody, and I'm an independent senator from Ontario. It is my great honor and pleasure to be with you this morning as we open day two of the Kids Brain Health Network Conference. To start, I'd like to thank the organizers of this great event, including Ms. Lewis, Dr. Zwicker, and the rest of your fantastic team. I'd also like to thank all of those attending today for, for your participation, especially the families of children who deal with neurodisability. I look forward to what I'm sure will be a fulsome and very interesting day of conversation. This year's theme is New and Emerging Ways of Connection, and that is relevant now more than ever before. As we have all experienced, COVID-19 has brought us into a time where all normal ways of connecting no longer work. Whether it's a meeting with a friend for coffee, sitting in a meeting room with colleagues, or bumping into a neighbor while on a walk, the needs we took for granted have in many ways needed to change. But we have adapted where we took things for granted, we now act with intention and purpose. Instead, setting up socially distanced coffee dates, meeting at the ends of our driveways, holding many Zoom meetings, team and FaceTime business meetings, social as well, parties with our friends and family, and of course, doctor's appointments. And those amongst us who are less comfortable with technology, well, we have dealt with that barrier. Finding new connections has really become essential to our lives. For some, it has been a matter of life or death. Should we have continued on that same path, the pandemic would have taken a much greater toll as we recognize already that isolation would and has taken its toll. COVID-19 has taught us that we need one another more than we thought, that we need to remain connected, that as human beings, we're not built to be alone. That is why this conference and the work of the Kids Brain Health Network, what you do is so key. Neurodisability too often keeps our children from making their, those essential connections. But we also recognize 
that our world is really not built to respond to their needs and to fully include them in society. And we recognize also that this, this lack of inclusivity is detrimental to their health and well-being. We know that it is imperative that as we move forward ensuring their inclusion, that we move forward to new ways of making better connections. There's a second value to the work that you do. As a parliamentarian and as a policymaker, I value evidence through data, conversation, and history to guide my work. I rely on organizations and networks, such as the Kids Brain Health Network, to get this evidence. After all, knowledge translation needs to be a primary concern of the scientific community, ensuring that the key purpose of research and obtaining knowledge is that the ultimate value add for our society. I applaud your efforts to make sure that it is being done and that it doesn't stop at publication, but that it goes on to impact and benefit the world around us, benefit all children and especially children with neurodisability. As I conclude, I urge us to, to consider what connecting will mean in the future. This is an important idea that is continuing to evolve as our technology and our in innovation involve, evolves. I'd urge us to remember the fundamental values of inclusion, fairness, equity, and decency in all our work, and to ensure that those affected by our work, and in this case, our children, have a strong and guiding voice from the identification of the priorities to understanding how to deal with the issues and everything in between. Nothing about them without them. I'm very thankful I had the opportunity to be here with you this morning, afternoon for some, and I wish you a successful day of dialogue and continuing through the rest of the conference. Thank you. you, the Honorable Senator Rosemary Moody. We did not coordinate our speeches. We're speaking from the same heart today. Nothing about us without us. What a wonderful way of, of starting, kicking off our day. And